So then I wanted to do microtrace testing. When it was tested by a microtrace chemist, he confirmed that it was completely dissimilar to hood latch swabs that he gathered for purposes of comparison. His sample that was actually taken from a hood latch of a car of similar vintage, there were dark marks on it, and there was absolutely nothing like that on the Avery hood latch swab. That contains a swab from the hood latch of Teresa Hallbach's RAV4? Yes. Do you recall when you looked at the swab, did you notice any condition to it as far as color? It was discolored, but it did not have the appearance. It was not a reddish-brown discoloration uh, consistent with blood. something that's very important that he needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And then she went and got him, and he came out. You know, that he, he said that he was going up to visit his parents. And then I said, well, what about Monday? And he said, what time? He goes, any time after 6. I said, I'll be here at 6. What do we do if he calls back and says, I don't want to talk to you? I'm going to tell him that, you know, I'm sorry to hear you say that. Um, this isn't going away. You can either, you know, you can either talk to me now, or you're going to eventually be on the stand. Mm -hmm. I at least recall no testimony that Teresa Halbach's blood was found on a bullet fragment, but the jury will decide in the yeah. end that. 
The state established cause of death through Dr. Jensen, who's a forensic pathologist from Milwaukee. And Dr. Jensen testified that Teresa Halbach died as a result of being shot in the head. And in his opinion, the bullet fragment, which is FL, passed through her brain and ended up on Avery's garage floor. The state presented no evidence in the Stephen Avery trial that any other part of Teresa Halbach's body was shot and that the cause of death was connected to anything other than the bullet fragment FL that was found on the floor in the garage. Here's the point. If FL went through two layers of thickness of her skull, entrance, exit, there would absolutely be bone fragments in the lead. route home, what she would have done is take a left on Q and headed south on Q. The last call, the call that she forwards when her phone is still active, is made at 241. That call pings off a cell phone tower miles away from the Avery property, the White Law Tower. So she's clearly on her way home when she hits that call forward button at 241. I believe the cell phones place her in the vicinity of Cuss Road. Cuss Road leads into the quarry. Could something have happened? Someone made a pass at her, some reason that she decided to leave? Thank you. 